I'm interested to see some videos about UV and Python. And as you can see, this LLM actually searches for videos on YouTube. So there's a tutorial by uh, Corey. There's also one of the videos by me. <sighs> High quality Python content and practical examples. Oh, very much appreciated. Anyway, I'm going to show you today exactly how I built this and how you can build integrations of your own tools with LLMs. As you'll see, there are multiple ways to structure this architecturally, and you actually do need to make a choice, but more about that later. But first, I want to talk about the standard that makes all of this possible, and it's called MCP. According to ChatGPT, MCP was introduced by OpenAI, which is completely false. It was Anthropic. Interestingly, if you ask Claude by Anthropic for what MCP is, it makes even less sense. Multi-controller processing architecture? Seriously? I don't think we're all going to be replaced by AI just yet. What MCP does stand for is Model Context Protocol. It's an open standard that allows AI models like LLMs to integrate with external tools and data sources. Now, you might think to yourself, why is that even necessary? Don't we have RESTful APIs already? Why can't LLMs just use that? Well, most language models like ChatGPT, they operate in a safe sandboxed environment. They don't have network access by default. They can freely call some arbitrary HTTP endpoint. And of course, a chatbot also needs to understand what your API does and what inputs it takes and what responses to expect. So even if a model could directly call an API, it wouldn't know when to call it, how to format the parameters, what to do with the response structure. And that's where MCP comes in. According to the website about model context protocol, it's like a USB-C port for AI applications. And you can also see a little image here about how this is all supposed to be structured. So on the left, you have your host with an MCP client. So that's uh, Claude or an IDE or different types of tools, basically anything that can use an MCP. And then via an MCP protocol that communicates with MCP servers. And MCP servers then again communicate with their own internal things. So in the case of the YouTube videos, you would have a data source, a source of YouTube video information. And then the MCP server provides endpoints that an MCP client can use to search for those videos. I'll show you in a minute how to do that. It's actually pretty easy. But if you're working on architectural decisions for your own project, and you need to consider these type of things, I've put together a free architecture checklist to help you avoid costly mistakes. Just go to arn.codes slash checklist to grab it. It's full of practical tips, covers all the key things you need to think about. arn.codes slash checklist link is in the video description. Now let's see how I built this YouTube video search example I showed you in the beginning. Now the first thing that I did is define a simple module that does the work of searching videos by keywords. And this is basically what that module looks like. Now it's nothing more than a simple wrapper around a package called YouTube search, but it has a function to search for YouTube videos. So there is a query. So that's where you would define your keywords. And there's also a maximum number of results. And then what this does is that it uses this YouTube search class that's from the YouTube search module to actually do the query and get the results, turn it into a dictionary and then return that. And then finally, there's also another little helper function that takes a video ID because each video on YouTube has a specific ID, obviously. And then it can construct a URL from that ID by simply putting it in this string right here. Now, if you want to then build an MCP server, then this is a server that basically exposes the functionality from the module that I just showed you. And you can do this really easily in Python by using the MCP package. So in this case, what you can see is that we import a class called FastMCP from this package. We initialize this server, and I'm just going to call it videos, could also call it YouTube videos, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Then, of course, an LLM in the end needs to work with strings. So what I'm doing here is that I format a particular video feature into a readable string. So I put the title, the channel, duration, description, and so on, and so on. 
views might also be interesting and the URL, which I construct using that function that I just showed you. And then we go to the actual implementation of the MCP server. And that's where we see this. And that's actually an interesting thing to talk about for a minute. So basically MCP servers, they can have three types of capabilities. They can have resources, that's basically data that can be read by an MCP client, similar to a get request in a RESTful API. The second thing is tools. So these are basically functions that can be called by the LLM. In this case, searching for videos, I've made that a tool. You could have also done it as, let's say, a resource, but in my opinion, search is maybe a bit more than just uh, retrieving some data because it can actually get quite complicated, even though this example is pretty basic. So we have resources, tools, and the third type is a prompt. That's basically a pre-written template that helps users accomplish specific tasks. Now it's really easy to actually install this in a locally running LLM. So what I've showed you at the start of the video is Claude Desktop, and you can basically open a desktop config file. So on the Mac, that's under library application support Claude, and then it's a JSON file. And there you can define MCP servers. So in this case, I have a server YouTube videos, the command is UV, and I'm providing it with arguments, namely directory, where we have this service defined, and then we're calling run on mcpvideos.pi, which is this file. And when you do that, then in Claude, you're going to have this little menu here where you can select these different MCP servers that you have. So in this case, we have YouTube videos. If I click on this, you also see that we have the get videos tool right here. And of course, that is exactly what this MCP server exposes. Now what I'm using here is the free version of Claude. If you get the paid version, there's more capabilities and integrations. In that case, you can also connect with remote MCPs for services like uh, GitHub, Stripe, etc. And now that I have my YouTube videos MCP, I can simply interact with this directly in the LLM, just like I showed you in the beginning. And as you can see, we get a bunch of different video suggestions. If you look at this little block, you see that there's a request. So this is actually how it interacted with our MCP server. And then in the response, we have all of this uh, data that was formatted by our MCP server. Now, it didn't mention the URL, uh, which I think uh, would have been helpful here. So you can probably improve the prompt so that you actually get uh, URLs actually from Cloud because it does get that as a response. So there's definitely some things to improve. Now, if you look at the architecture of this, then basically my MCP server currently directly uses the YouTube helper module. In terms of architecture, this might actually not be the best way to set things up because that also means that there's now various direct function calls throughout the code. For example, when I'm formatting the video, I directly call constructing the video URL right here. And in my MCP tool endpoints, I have to call directly these functions. Now, obviously this is a very basic example, but you can imagine this can become quite messy once you start adding more features or you have a bigger service that you wanna expose as an MCP server to your LLMs. Now, on top of that, if you are let's say building some sort of bigger service, it's likely that you already have a RESTful API that exposes functionality to other clients, such as a front-end app. Now, before I show you another version of this MCP server that is architecturally slightly different, give this video a like if you're enjoying it so far. This really helps me out because then I know whether or not to make more videos about this topic. If you don't wanna miss those videos, make sure you also subscribe to the channel. Now. Back to our MCP server architecture, you want to avoid duplication and therefore it might make sense to not directly call these modules, but call your API instead. Now for the MCP server, that adds an extra indirection, but it also means that if you make an update to your API or fix a bug, then the MCP server benefits from that immediately as well. So here, let me show you another version, but now it relies on an API. So what I did in this step is that I have a new file called video API. So this is kind of my restful API. And here I have a simple fast API app that does the video searching for me. So I have a get request for getting videos. 
this actually searches for uh, videos and then returns that as a dictionary using the video base model. And as you can see, it also directly calls this video URL helper function to construct the full URL. Then once you have this API, you can create another version of the MCP server that then calls that API instead of relying directly on the modules. And that's what you see here. So I'm using HTTPX as a package to uh, do HTTP requests. I have my uh, URL, my API URL, and of course you can change this to if it's hosted in the cloud or something. But then what we have is just a piece of code that formats the video. So we had that in the previous MCP server as well. But as you can see, it here just directly gets the URL from the result. And then we have the tool that actually uses an HTTPX async client, and then it does a GET request on my API. That gives back some JSON data, and then you can use that to actually format each of these entries that you get back into a uh, response that an LLM can actually work with. So this is an architectural choice that you need to make, right? Uh, do you directly call the modules? in your MCP server, or do you actually build your MCP server as a layer on top of your REST API? By the way, there is a third option. With Fast MCP, you can actually automatically convert a Fast API application into an MCP server. Here you see an example of that. Now, of course, this only works if your original API was already written in Fast API, but then this is an easy way to convert it into an MCP server. You'd still need to think of the architecture for the case where you would like to have both the API and the MCP server. So this may not work for you, but at least it's possible. Now I'd say if your service is really simple, then maybe there's no need for a separate layer. Also, if you never plan to use an API that's separate from your MCP server, in other words, if the things you're building is specifically and only for integrating with AI models, yeah, then just keep it simple, obviously. But in many cases, it's a good idea to build the MCP server as a layer on top of your API instead of directly calling functions from various modules. For example, if your company offers a tool that has a REST API, then you can build an MCP server that accesses that API. And in that sense, you can consider the MCP part of your system as simply another user of your API, very similar to a web frontend. Now, if you're building tools, you're working on backend systems, think about what kind of functionality you want to expose to AI models. This is all very new, but in the coming years, I expect we'll see many MCP implementations. And I expect that soon offering AI access to your tool via MCP is going to be expected. If you don't do it, then your competitors will. Fortunately, as you've seen today, building an MCP server is not hard, as long as you set it up so that it's easy to maintain for you. In most cases, that means letting the MCP talk with your REST API if you already have one. But I'd like to hear from you though. Did you already build an MCP server yourself? What's your experience been with them? Do you have any tips you'd like to share? Let me know in the comments. If you'd like me to dive deeper into these types of topics, system design and architecture that involves AI, let me know what you'd like me to do more videos about. Now, API design in general is something that's hard to do right. If you want to learn how to do that, make sure you check out this video next. It covers a few crucial things you need to do. Thanks for watching and see you next time.